So great news, we've fixed the cold start issue on this Toyota D4D 2.2. In this video, I'm going to be detailing how I went about diagnosing and fixing this. So first off, the symptoms of the cold start issue is that um, after the car had sat for 24 hours, it basically wouldn't want to start. It would prolong start. Eventually it would start. And when it did start, you'd get a puff of diesel coming out the back it out the back it didn't sound great it always did start and once that first initial start had been done the car would start fine for the rest of the day um and um, it would just simply be if it's been left overnight um when it was colder temperatures this could become worse um, it could be um even if the car just left for half a day maybe um there wasn't really a specific time frame but it would not, not want to start very well uh once the engine had been left cold so i bought this car with this inherited problem and i know it's not unique to this particular car because i did look at another 2.2 d4d engine car and it was a rav4 and it had uh, the same issue so i know that this is an inherent problem with the car and we'll explain why that is an inherent problem with the car because it's to do with the design of the engine but i'm going to go through everything that i've done to fix this because this is all part of the diagnostic process and uh, if we skip these processes you may have these issues with your car and going straight to the end may not actually fix the issue on your particular car itself. So when I bought this car, it had been sitting for some time. Brakes are rusty. 12 volt battery was flat, essentially. Um, charged it and um, we tried to recondition the battery, but it wouldn't do it. So... First thing we did was to replace the 12 volt battery. That didn't fix the issue. So uh, the next thing is with all diesel cars is we're looking at fuel and air. So just gonna zoom in at the back there. So this here is the fuel filter area. So what I did was I replaced the fuel filter. I also ran some additives through the engine, try and clean out the injectors. Now, while this may have helped um, because it could have been a sticky injector, which was leaving the injector open if it had been left for a period of time and fluid was draining into a cylinder and causing the start issue. Um, once the engine was running, it was running absolutely 100%. So... I wasn't thinking there was anything wrong with the injectors. When I started looking into this issue online, people were it's got to be the injectors or it's got to be the high pressure pump. Um, it, it was neither of those. So um, replace the fuel filter. That didn't fix it. On the top of the fuel filter, there is a little button um, which basically pressurizes the fuel system. Uh, and on some cars, they have a separate lift pump in the tank. This one doesn't have it. Um, and I wonder whether there was either a blockage and there wasn't enough pressure in there. So I tried using that to build up pressure. Uh, a cold start still didn't fix the problem. So we knew it wasn't that. Along with the fuel filter, also replaced the air filter because airflow is key. Um, everything looked all fine in that area. Um, can't hurt to service a car. So we did an oil change, fuel filter, air filter, so all service up to speed. The next thing we did was to replace the glow plugs. The glow plugs uh, underneath this cover, done a separate video on that, and we did have 40 glow plugs. So um, I did test them as part of the removal process. They were very simple to replace, to be honest, no sticky glow plugs, and a lot of people get scared of replacing glow plugs because they can snap off in the cylinders. Um, this was on this engine it was absolutely fine so um, one of the things I would recommend to do is to replace those glow plugs because it will help to um, start the car when it is cold um, albeit this engine 
uh, being a common rail um, doesn't need the glow plugs when it's warm essentially um, it's only when it is very cold that it's going to need the glow plugs anyway that didn't fix that so at this point I was running out of pieces to fix this so started googling on the internet and people said it was this suction control valve so I had a look and I found one on eBay exactly the same part um, much cheaper the people on um, forums said that not only do you need to replace that but you need to book in a Toyota and get it coded so when I replaced it I disconnected the battery and did a reset and surprisingly it did fix the issue so replace the, the suction control valve and for about a week the car started absolutely fine but the problem came back so that didn't fix it so um, starting to get a bit frustrated with this and then started thinking is it going to be the high pressure fuel pump is it going to be the injectors as people have said um, also people have indicated that the starter motor is uh, the cause of all of this um, I can tell you now it's not the starter motor so the next thing I looked into is um, am I getting the correct air metering through here so um, so we replaced the air mass meter um, and we did this because using an app um, through the phone and the OBD port it indicated that the intake temperature was incorrect um, cleaned that replace that that didn't fix it I'm still getting bad uh, readings from the um, intake temperature so we replaced the intake temperature sensor which is just down uh, at the front of the engine and uh, again the readings were still incorrect so I'm guessing the app or the OBD port reader are incorrect um, after all of that I decided uh, to carry out a reset so i wondered whether or not the readings from the sensors uh, just weren't resetting so featured this on the channel how i've done it but the short thing of it is basically you disconnect the battery and then you connect an ht lead to the wires and you completely drain all of the power out of all of the ecus so we did that and actually it made the problem worse so the car wouldn't idle when it was warm and didn't want to start sometimes as well when it was warm um, so the engine idle is all set up by this suction control valve and um, basically i had the old suction control valve uh, at home still so this is the old and original suction control valve i've refitted this so carried out the basic reset again and once i carried out the basic reset completely transformed the car no turbo's cold so i can touch that jump around it's in the car okay in the ignition Get it on, wait for the lights to go out. There we go. Perfect starting again. So, um, yeah, happy that this has been fixed. Oh, no problems. It's been a month and a half now. I've not had a single starting issue. So, what happened is that... Um, the suction control valve that I've replaced was a rubbish suction control valve and um, the problem to start off with was when this 12 volt battery went wrong so if you have got this engine the first thing you need to do is to carry out the reset procedure I'll link down below how I've done that uh, and basically you should be able to reset the suction control valve now a lot of these other things that people have talked about like changing starter motors and batteries and stuff like that to 
to do all of that, you do need to reset the battery. And depending on how long the battery's been left off for, you could inadvertently use all of the power from all of the ECUs and therefore fix the issue. So I don't think any of these people having their starter motors or high pressure pumps replaced or injectors replaced are actually fixing the issue. All they're doing is resetting the suction control valve. So the good news is that if you've got this issue, you can fix it for free. So, brilliant news. Um, but I've gone through all of the things that I've done on the engine because some of them may be relative to your engine. Like I said, glow plugs, if your glow plugs are naff, um, you could do that and you still might have other issues. If your filter filter's dirty, you could do this and you still could have issues. So you need to basically do the basics. Make sure the engine's been serviced, 12 volt battery is in good condition, check or replace the glow plugs um, and just reset the suction control valve. So sorry it's taken a really long time to fix this issue, um, but as far as I know, I'm the only one that has been able to work out this issue on this engine. Uh, certainly no one in any of the forums has actually suggested this. So um, yeah, I believe this is a fix for the 2.2 D4D, and this may relate to other D4D engines, anything that has the suction control valve, because if that is incorrectly set up, you're not gonna get good starting. Um, if you could like this video, um, it will help me uh, with the YouTube algorithm. It will help me with the YouTube algorithm. Turn on notifications and subscribe to the channel. And uh, if this has helped you, you can actually thank me using the super thanks button as well. So uh, thank you very much for watching if you've made it this far in the video.